I am super excited about today's video. So if you've been following our recent hex grid tutorial series, you may remember that we set up some really basic randomization to create some water tiles and some land tiles. Well, today I'm going to show you how to go from this to this with some procedural noise and some fancy schmancy material work. So let's dive in. The first thing we need to do is find a way to generate noise within our blueprint. And I found this really great open source library called Fast Noise 2. And fortunately for us, there's actually already a plugin that we can download that will help us integrate this library into our blueprints. I'll put a link to the Fast Noise library and the Fast Noise Generator plugin down below in the description. So once you get the plugin installed within your editor, the setup is actually pretty simple. The first thing that you'll need to add is the construct object from class. And once you add that, you can select the fast noise wrapper right here. And I've already gone ahead and done that. And then I've taken that wrapper and plugged it into a variable, which I'm going to call noise wrapper level one. So that's going to be the first level of our noise. And today we're actually going to have two levels. And once you have that set up, you're going to take a setup fast noise node and plug that into your wrapper variable. And as you can see, you have all of these different settings that you can adjust to create your noise. Now I've taken all of these created variables out of them that I can then edit within the editor on the front end. And once you have those three things, that's pretty much your basic setup. Now I'll show you how to take that wrapper and then grab information from it. So again, we have our first level of noise right there. And then we have our second, which is just a copy of the first. I've just plugged that into a different variable right here. Now, if you remember, we were working on our grid in the second episode and simply just taking this random float value and using that to determine our height. So this is actually where we're going to take our noise information and then use those values to generate the height for our grid. Now, if you imagine that the noise pattern that we're generating is projected on a 2D plane on top of our grid, what we're actually going to need is the individual position of each instance to then figure out what the value of the noise is at that position. So the first thing that we're going to grab is actually the instance transform from our instance static mesh and then the index that we're currently working on within our loop. And again, because we're working on a 2D plane, we're just going to grab the X and Y location from our transform. Now, what you see here are the two different noises that I've set up. So we're actually just going to be focusing on these nodes right here for our level one noise. So we're taking our X and Y value. We're going to multiply that by a float called noise scale, which is going to allow us to scale the points at which we're grabbing that information from the noise. Now, this is the point where we're going to go back to our noise wrapper. So you grab our noise wrapper level one variable that's holding our wrapper information. And we're going to use the get noise 2D node to grab the value of our noise at the X and Y position of our instance. Now we can actually replace our random float value with our get noise 2D value and we'll see what happens. So you'll notice that we are already getting some information coming in for our grid. And if we change the seed, we get a different variation of that grid. We can adjust the frequency to change our noise generation. And we're finally getting some land masses. Now we can also take our tile height strength variable and adjust that to get some more elevation in our land masses. And even with that change, we can still get some really cool effects. Now there's one part I'm not quite happy with, and that's actually the water. It looks okay, but it could look a little bit better. And I have a couple ideas of how to do that. First off, those water tiles are still generating, but everything's flattened out. So we could achieve the same effect with just a plane and a water material. But instead of clamping all of our water tiles to remain at a level of zero, we can actually use the lower noise values to exaggerate the depth that they fall and create more depth within our water. So I added a static mesh plane to our hex grid actor, and I've just inserted a hex plane mesh that is sized the same as our hex tiles. Now I wanted that mesh to scale at the same rate as our grid. So I inserted this code here after our for loop completes. It takes our static mesh and then rescales it according to the width and height settings that we've done for our grid. I then created a simple water material that has some depth fade and opacity to it and applied that to the plane in our actor. can see you get a really nice transparency effect on our water. 
And in fact, if you get the setting exactly right, you can almost get this kind of fog-like effect, which I think looks kind of cool. So we've added our noise to our hex grid and also adjusted our water material to be on a plane, allowing us to use the hex tiles that are technically water to give us a little bit more depth in those areas. So the next step that I want to do is figure out a way to use the elevation of our tile or our height to adjust the look or the terrain type of that tile. So one thing that would be very apparent to me is that if the tile is at water level or towards the shore, it would be more of a sand tile or a rocky tile. Or if the tile is at a medium elevation, it could either be a grass tile or a plain tile or maybe a forest tile in the future. Or if it's at a higher elevation, we're going to introduce some snow at the top. So welcome to my messy, messy material tile here. What I've done is essentially add some absolute world position lerps to our material to determine at what height different colors will be introduced for our tiles. So in the area that used to be our water color, we're actually going to switch that over to our sand and underwater color because our water color is being handled now by our plane. What you can do is take the absolute world position, which is going to take the absolute world position on a very pixel on that material. Because we're just trying to grab that Z value of our world position, we're just going to mask for our B value. We're going to add a simple offset variable so we can adjust where that falls. And then we're going to adjust the scale, which is going to stretch out that gradient in our lerp. And you can do that with an add, a divide or multiply, depending on how you want to look at that variable, and then saturate it to make sure that it stays between zero and one for our alpha of our lerp. I've set a sand color vector variable there, and then our underwater color vector variable there. We're lerping between those two, and then plugging that in to our if statement that we've been using in our previous two episodes that determines whether or not the elevation of our tile is above or below zero. Now you'll also notice that I've added a material parameter collection variable right here. This just allowed me a way to adjust that value from our blueprint on the front end of the editor, as opposed to going into the back end of the material. So I've done that same setup for a few different tile types. We had our sand color and our underwater color. I've also added a rock color and snow color and then added that to the upper end of our world position lerp. And then another thing that I've done is we used to have a noise texture being plugged into this lerp right here for our grass in order to give some pattern overlay to that, that green. Now what I've done instead is to use the per instance random node and plug that into the alpha. So what this does is that every instance within our instance static mesh, it's going to assign a random float value. So while our noise overlay was a little bit more gradual, this is going to be every individual tile having its own color and it's going to stand out a little bit more. And you'll also notice that I've added sort of another default terrain type here called our planes that we're also lerping with our per instance random. And then I've set another if statement so I can control the ratio of grass to planes that I want on our grid. So if you combine all of these material changes, our new water plane mesh, and our noise generation, you get a little something like this. Now I really like that look, but it's a little flat. So I want to add in that second layer of noise to our grid. So we can go back to that same spot as before and plug in our second noise wrapper over here into a clamp. So what I've done here is I've added that second layer of noise into our tile height set up here. So we can add some variation both above and below the existing tiles. And hopefully what that's going to create is higher peaks for maybe some mountains and some lower levels in our land masses that might create some lakes or, or something similar to that. So we'll go ahead and hit compile here. And there's our variation. So you'll notice that we have a lot more variation now within our grid. Our elevations are steeper and we have areas of water that randomly generate within our land masses. And the, even the areas underneath our oceans have a little bit more variation under them as well. Now I've actually created an event where every time I press left control, it's going to randomly generate a new seed for our map. And you can actually do this in real time. 
So let me show you how many different variations that we can have within our grid with our new noise system. And with that, we have a fully procedural grid using noise to create different land masses and automatically set different terrain types depending on the elevation of those tiles. Now this is just the first step in this noise generation. There are a lot of things that we can still do. And I'd still like to adjust the look of everything. It's still not quite the art style that I'm looking for. So we're definitely gonna be working on that in the future. So if you're interested in how that's gonna look or any more hex grid tutorials in the future, be sure to like and subscribe below. It's always appreciated and very helpful for the channel. And if you have any ideas about the art style or any gameplay mechanics that could be used within this type of hex grid, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested more in how this all works and want to test out the blueprints yourself, you can download the entire project in a link in the description. And until next time, this is the Stay at Home Dev, signing off.